Lightroom is definitely getting better with every new update. And today I want to show you how to create advanced masking in Lightroom. Okay, so I'm inside of Photoshop and um, I've only done uh, the general settings. So all uh, that so far. Here is the raw image. Here is just with the general settings. And uh, now I am going to show you uh, everything masking. So now uh, with Lightroom, you can really do uh, advanced masking. And when I first started, like not even five years ago, uh, we didn't have all this option inside of Lightroom, which means we had to go inside of Photoshop. The more updates there is with uh, Lightroom, uh, the easier it is to don't go at all inside of Photoshop, stay inside of Lightroom to do everything we need. So that's really uh, interesting if you are not a big fan of Photoshop or if you don't know the software at all. So I would still think that Photoshop uh, can do a lot more in details because you can do really precise selection, but uh, if you don't need uh, a lot of details, uh, depending on your photos, Lightroom is more than enough. So I'm going to show you uh, different things. So here on this photo, I might want to add a linear gradient to close the photo a little bit uh, here on the bottom. Uh, what I could do uh, use is also radial gradient. So I'm going to show you both. Um, so here, as you can see, I clicked on linear gradient and then I just have to drag and everything that is red is what is selected. You can also see that uh, on this little icon here, everything that is white is what is going to be affected. Everything that is black is not going to be affected. So you can turn it like this or um, move it that way or even uh, make it bigger like this so the feather is uh, less strong. For my case, I'm gonna use something like that. And then you have all the settings that you have in the uh, general settings, but here we are going to target only um, what is red. So here I want to close this area um, so the eyes focus less on um, this area here on the bottom. So I'm gonna add some contrast, reduce the exposure. Um, what I could do, sometimes I like to do that, is to add some blue, some cooler tones, so the eyes are focused more on the warmer tones. Um, so yeah, that's one way um, to uh, do that. And now I'm going to show you another way to uh, close this area here. This is with the uh, radial gradient. So I create a new mask, I click on Radial Gradient, then I'm going to drag. And here the thing is, uh, as you can see, everything that is red is going to be affected. It, it doesn't affect the area I want. The area I want is here, this area on the bottom of the image. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to invert this mask. So it's going to invert my selection. So I can just click here, Invert. And as you can see, it's inverted my selection. Now I'm going to do something like this, make it bigger. I don't want it to affect this area of the image. And now I'm going to reduce the exposure, add some contrast. I like it because it also close um, the side uh, of the image. Okay, I can even so do the same with color and maybe Go to effect and go down with clarity so there is less details in this area so the eyes uh, doesn't get stuck here. Um, let me check what we did. Um, so this is before and this is after. Before and after. You can see so just with a red gradient we already helped the eyes to focus on the right area, the area that we want to focus is uh, this street and especially this building with the street here. It's kind of a leading line like this. Okay, so we saw linear gradient, radial gradient. I think that's the easiest one uh, to use inside of Lightroom. What else do we have? Um, so we have the brush uh, tool also that you can use here. You can uh, freely brush whatever you want. Um, but it won't be too precise. So here I brush this, that means I can do some adjustment. 
but it's not really precise as you can see. So that depends uh, what you want to do. Um, if you don't want to, if you don't like to use um, like the red gradient or the linear gradient, the brush um, tool can be uh, interesting. So we can do the same just by brushing this area and adding uh, less exposure. But yeah, I'm I'm less interested about this tool because it's not really precise and it's not going to be useful in many situations. So yeah, but it's here if you need it. Um, so you have here all the setting of the brush, the size, the feather, as you can see. Uh, this is for the ages of your brush and then you have the flow and the density. So here I'm going to delete this mask. And now, uh, so we are going to uh, try this object, uh, select object tool that is usually pretty uh, good. Uh, here I'm going to select maybe the facade of this house here. And this works pretty well. So here, let's say I wanted to uh, make it maybe a little brighter. Uh, I'm going to go more towards blue because uh, is, there is like kind of a color cast that is yellow and I'm not a big fan of it. Um, now what else? Maybe add more contrast, but not too much. Open the shadows a little bit. So here it affects only uh, the facade uh, thanks to the select object um, tool. So it works pretty well and usually you don't have to redefine but if you really need to redefine this uh, mask what you can do uh, let's say you wanted to include this uh, thing here what you can do is to use add and then use maybe the brush or Ready gradient or the object. Let's choose the object once again. And here I'm going to select this. And beam it's added inside of the selection. Now uh, let's say I want to remove something. Uh, so I'm gonna use the subtract and then uh, same, I'm gonna use object. I select the thing I want to remove and this is removed. I can also do it with the brush, of course. Uh, let me make it smaller. And here I'm removing what I don't want because that wasn't perfect. So this is a way to do a really advanced uh, selection because you can really perfect it and create details here. Let's add a part of the wall with the brush as well. Okay. So with a combination of tools, you can see that you can create uh, advanced masking. So here, this is before and this is after. Uh, here, the reason why I keep seeing this red overlay is because I click on show overlay. So if I uncheck this, I don't see it anymore. You can also change the color of your overlay. So if you prefer it to be blue, for example, it can be blue. Uh, for me, I'm gonna keep it um, red and uncheck the show overlay. And then I can see before and after, before and after, okay? Now, what else do we have? We have people and subject. Really interesting if you have uh, someone inside of your photo. Here, there is no one in the street, so I can't show you on this photo. Then you have sky, so here it's going to select your sky. It usually works pretty well as well. Here it's interesting. It might be a bit too much uh, because it's taking some of the buildings. Um, so what you can do is to uh, do subtract uh, to fix that. So here I'm going to use uh, maybe the brush. Uh, let's feather. Okay. And I am removing some parts of the buildings that I don't want my mask to be affected. Okay, something like that. Um, 
I could be even more precise, honestly. But here I'm not going to do a big chain of the sky, I think. If I do, uh, we're just going to perfect our mask. Okay, so then uh, I do my settings. So I don't know, maybe I make it darker. More contrast. I can change the color temperature as well. So here we can see I did uh, in purpose something really strong. And we can see that the mask is not perfect because you can see some hello here. So here I am going to remove um, this mask, the late mask. And I'm going to recreate one. So I'm going to select sky. It's not perfect, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do subtract and then uh, object. I'm going to select the buildings if that works. Okay, and it's removing uh, the buildings. It's not perfect yet, so I'm gonna keep removing until I'm happy with what I get. Okay, it's better, still not perfect, oops. So let's keep working on it. And you see uh, with the combination of um, the tools, you can really do advanced masking inside of um, Lightroom. Nice, and we just have to remove this, this as well. Okay, now I'm gonna use uh, the brush. I'm gonna zoom in quite a lot. And I am removing some patches that I see here. Okay. And now I am moving around in my photo. I see some patches here as well. So you need to be precise, so don't hesitate to change the size of your brush. And here we are going to need and fix that. So here I'm gonna add brush. Uh, I'm gonna add and choose, let's try object and select just this part of the sky. It works, that's cool. Um, then I'm gonna add another one with brush and fix that part here. Nice, very nice, cool. And now uh, that I have a pretty good selection I am going to uh, do my adjustments. So here I'm thinking about something maybe darker, small contrasts. Um, yeah, I like the sky to be not too saturated. So I add the opposite color, which is yellow. Um, so it helps the sky to be not too blue and very um, unnatural. I could even reduce the saturation something like that okay and you can see this is before and after and that was with a combination uh, of the sky uh, masking tool and the subtract and add uh, with the different tools um, so here we have quite an advanced uh, masking um, now what else? I want to show you the luminance range. It will allow you to create a mask depending of the luminance of your image. So here I'm not sure it's going to be really relevant, but I'm going to show you how it works. So I just click on a new luminance range and I'm going to click on one specific um, light range. So here I'm going to click on the highlights and you can see everything that is red is everything that is selected. And then here uh, with this little square, 
in this um, little line here, I can adjust my selection. Okay. So here it's going to be more uh, of the feather. And here is kind of the range. Okay. So here let's say I want really just the thing that are really bright. And what I want to do is to, um, I don't know, maybe add some tint inside of it, make it more yellow. So that would be a way to do it. Now, uh, honestly, I don't really like it on this image. So what I'm going to do is to delay that. And maybe we're going to try on the shadows. Uh, it might be more interesting for our image. So I click on luminance range. And I'm going to click on some shadows here, for example. Uh, let's say if I'm happy with my selection. Let's do something like that. But now I don't want the sky to be included. So I'm going to do subtract. And choose a sky. So it's removing the sky of my selection. And now uh, I want to tint the black uh, area, the darkest area of my luminance range, so everything that is red, with some blue. So I'm going to take the temperature and go towards blue. Um, yeah. Before and after before and after and now I'm, I'm thinking I don't want it to affect the red that is here so I'm just going to take a brush click on object show the overlay and yeah perfect it's removing this part because I didn't like the effect so it's really so sort of like look here especially before and after, before and after, okay? It's three really details, but that's details that makes great photos. Um, now I'm going to show you color range. So I'm clicking on color range, and if I click on one color, it's going to um, choose this color, and everything that is the same color on the image, uh, you will be able to um, do some settings. So here, let's say I wanna choose this orange here, then you can refine your selection. So here looks like the color I chose is present in a big part of the photo. So let me refine it. I find that the color range is not really, really precise compared to all the tools that are, uh, pretty, that are working pretty well. And then I can do my settings. Okay, so this is before and this is after. So here it's targeting everything that is kind of orange. And uh, you can see that we were able to refine, otherwise you would target everything that is that has kind of a orange cast. So yeah, this tool is not the best tool inside of Lightroom, I would say. Okay, so here uh, you can see with the mask uh, only, we've been able to change the image from this to this. So you can see uh, with the different type of mask, you can really uh, edit a very advanced photo only inside of Lightroom. As always, I really recommend to experiment with it, to use the different masking tool and to also use the add and subtract option so you can really go far in your masking inside of Lightroom.